If you've been watching this channel religiously, you may know about my interest in the so-called country of New Zealand. I'm not sure if it's a real country, as it isn't always included on all the maps like a real country would be, and some places refuse to recognize their passports on the basis that the whole thing seems made up. It's a real problem for the country's citizens. The story I'm about to tell you may or may not help their case. So in 2022, when I visited New Zealand with a friend, we of course arrived at Auckland International Airport. When we were leaving the airport, we were greeted by this flag. Now, the astute among you will know that this is not the flag of New Zealand. I'm no vexillological expert, but after a bit of googling, I found out that this was the flag of Samoa. Now, relatively speaking, Samoa is near New Zealand, and many Samoans live in the country, so it wouldn't be surprising to see a flag or two on your visit to New Zealand. But at this point, neither I nor my friend had seen a flag for New Zealand proper. Even more interestingly, as we left the airport and headed to our hotel, we ended up passing people in the streets waving Samoan flags. One man had even climbed atop a bus stop and was dancing and waving the Samoan flag high in the air. An absolute legend, to be sure. More googling led us to the reason for the celebration. Samoa was in the Rugby World Cup, a sport which, as an American, I know absolutely nothing about. They were apparently doing quite well, and were fresh off trouncing England on their way to the finals. Now, mercilessly defeating England is something that basically anyone can celebrate. So, people bought flags and took to the streets, shutting down traffic in downtown Auckland. According to One News, a New Zealand media company, the police issued a statement urging calm, saying, English tears are the only ones we need today. The celebrations we were seeing in the streets that day were the pre-game celebrations for the finals that night, I believe against Australia. It was a big deal that Samoa was even in the finals, so people were ready to party many hours before the match had even begun. We see a few more groups celebrating, having a good time, and generally enjoying themselves. Things change, however, after midnight. Apparently, Samoa lost, and it was not particularly close. My rugby knowledge is minimal, but from what I gather, the game ended about as quickly as it could have. One might think that this would cause people to stop celebrating and either get angry or give up on their reverie. But the celebrations only increased in potency. In certain American cities, a major loss will lead to cars being flipped and dumpsters being set on fire. But here, the celebrations stayed mostly joyous, even in defeat. The spirit of Samoans and their fans in New Zealand could not be broken. They partied through the night, driving up and down the road near our hotel, blasting music and generally having a good time. Now, obviously, we didn't get much sleep, but I'm not going to complain about that because personally, I think the whole thing is some funny, lighthearted mischief. Shortly after that, we left the North Island of New Zealand and headed for the South, which is much more rural, and thus we saw fewer celebrations. However, about a week later, we saw that the parties were still ongoing, though it seemed like some locals were getting fed up with them and police were attempting to tamp down on the celebrations. Honestly, I was still happy for them. Let the people have some fun. Many months after our return from the possibly non-existent country of New Zealand, my friend sent me an article that mentioned the continuing fallout of the rugby celebrations. The headline read, New Zealand town Porirua tormented by late-night Celine Dion music battles. These music battles were undertaken by groups known as Siren Kings, with massive cobbled-together sound systems adorning their cars. Yes, the siren part is literal. While these have long been a part of Pacific Islander, Pacifica, youth culture in New Zealand, they have seen a resurgence in popularity ever since the post-Rugby World Cup celebrations in 2022. Honestly, it is so beautiful that people will get together in the middle of the night for a competition of who can play My Heart Will Go On 
the loudest. Sometimes they do this at prearranged times in industrial areas so as not to disturb folks. But it seems that when tensions between various groups of Siren Kings flare, it often spills over into the suburbs at 3 a.m. Additionally, the Siren Kings have their own genre and style of music, which they play in addition to the Celine Dion songs. If I had gone to New Zealand a few weeks earlier, I probably would have never heard about this. My flight was changed at the last minute as well, which placed me on the peak day of rugby celebrations. And now because of that, you get this video. <laughs> 